Hey everybody, welcome to Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elasticsearch and Kibana. My name is Lisa Jung and I'm a developer advocate at Elastic. So this is a series of short videos for developers who want to get started with Elasticsearch and Kibana. In episode 16, we learned about what bucket aggregations are and the different types of bucket aggregations we could choose from. We primarily talked about the date histogram aggregation, which allows you to create buckets based on time intervals. Today, we'll cover other types of bucket aggregations and talk about histogram, range, and terms aggregations. All right, let's get started. Today's episode builds on material covered in episodes 15 and 16. So before you get started, be sure to watch these episodes to get the full context. Okay, so let's get organized here. I have two windows open side by side. On the left, I have the Kibana console. On the right, I have the part four repo. And this repo contains all the aggregations requests we'll go over. And I've scrolled down to histogram aggregation section. And this is where we'll get started today. So in episode 16, we learned about the date histogram aggregation and how we can create buckets based on time intervals. With histogram aggregation, we could create buckets based on any numerical interval. For example, let's say we wanted to create buckets based on price intervals, and we want the price interval to increase in increments of 10. So let's scroll down to the example. And this is very similar to the last request we sent in the previous episode. Only thing that is different is that we're naming it transactions per price interval, and we're running a histogram aggregations on the field unit price, and we want the price interval to increase in increments of 10. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see the aggregations results, which we name transactions per price interval. And in the buckets array, each bucket represents a price interval. So each interval increases in the increments of 10 in unit price. And that is what's represented by the field key here. And you'll also see the document count, which represents the number of documents in each bucket, or in our case, the number of transactions in each price interval. So in the first price interval, there are over 500,000 transactions for items priced within this interval. In the next price, in, price interval, there are more than 20,000 transactions. And it seems like the higher we go up in price interval, the number of transactions decreases. So it looks like there may be a pattern here, and this might be worth exploring if we're looking to improve our sales strategy. Now, like the date histogram aggregation, the histogram aggregation sorts buckets based on the key values as well. By default, it sorts the key in ascending order. So as you can see, the price interval is shown from lowest to highest. But what if we wanted to reverse the order? So let's scroll down to bucket sorting for histogram aggregation. So if you want to sort by descending order, all you have to do is to add the order parameter below the interval here. Then specify that you want to sort the key values in descending order. This way, the highest price interval is listed first instead of last. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that it reversed the order, so the price intervals are listed in descending order. Okay, so let's move on to the range aggregation. So let's scroll down to that section. So the range aggregation is similar to histogram aggregation in that you could create buckets based on any numerical interval. What's different is that the range aggregation allows you to define intervals of varying sizes. So for example, let's say you want to look at the number of transactions from varying price ranges from 0 to 50, between 50 to 200, then 200 and up. So let's scroll down to example. 
Again, this request is very similar to the last one, except that we're naming it transactions per custom price ranges. And we're running the range aggregations on the field unit price. Then we provide the ranges here. The first range is from zero to 50. The second range is from 50 to 200. And the third range is from 200 and up. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see the results from our aggregations here. And we have an array of buckets. And you'll see over 500,000 transactions have occurred for items priced between 0 to 50. 855 transactions for items priced between 50 to 200 and 307 transactions for items priced from 200 and up. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, can I sort the range aggregation? And the answer is no. So the range aggregation is sorted based on the input ranges you specify, and there's no way to move that around. So lastly, let's talk about the terms aggregation. So let's scroll down to that section. So the terms aggregation creates a new bucket for every unique term it encounters for the specified field. By default, it returns top 10 terms that are most frequently mentioned in a given set of data. So it's often used to find the most frequently occurring terms in our index. For example, let's say you wanted to find the top five customers with the highest number of transactions. Well, each document is a transaction and each transaction includes a customer ID. So if we find the five most frequently occurring customer IDs, we'll find our top five customers. So the aggregations request looks something like this. So let's scroll down to the example here. We would name the aggregation top five customers and we're performing terms aggregations on the field called customer ID. And since we want only the top five customers, we set the size of the aggregation to five. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. All right, so let's take a look at the results and you'll see an array of five buckets of unique customer IDs along with the number of documents, the transactions from each customer. So let's talk about sorting for terms aggregation. So by default, terms aggregation sorts buckets by the doc count values. And you'll see that buckets were sorted in descending order of document count. But what if we wanted to sort in ascending order? So let's scroll down to bucket sorting for terms aggregation. When we ask Elasticsearch to sort the buckets in an ascending order, it'll display the customers with the lowest number of documents, therefore the lowest number of transactions. So I'm naming this aggregations as five customers with lowest number of transactions, and I'm performing a terms aggregations on the field customer ID. And we specify that we want five buckets returned, then we add an order parameter and open up a bracket and you tell Elasticsearch that you want to sort by dog count values in ascending order. So let's copy and paste that into the console. Make sure to select and send. You'll see that it grabbed five customer IDs with the lowest number of transactions or document count of one. All right, we just learned about different types of bucket aggregations, such as histogram, range, and terms aggregations. And each type is designed for different use cases, so getting familiar with all of these will help you group your data in the most efficient way. This content is an excerpt from the Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Stack Part 4, and Part 4 is a full-length workshop where I talk about metric aggregations, bucket aggregations, and combined aggregations. And these aggregations are used to get different types of insights that we're looking for. So if you prefer the full-length workshop format, check out the link on the screen. And the link is also included in the description of this video. 
Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode of Mini Beginner's Crash Course to Elastic Search in Kibana.